For countless decades, the Portuguese fishing fleet has been coming to St. John's. Since the 200 mile limit, each year Canada has been allocating smaller quotas to all foreign nations, including the Portuguese. Last year, they received an overall quota of 8,100 tons. And this year, it's been dropped to 6,100, a figure the Portuguese have yet to accept. Tonight, we're going to give land and sea viewers a look back to the year 1967, when the Portuguese White Fleet was going strong. Our program is narrated by Angelo da Silva. Riding at anchor on Grand Banks of Newfoundland, Luis Rival is waiting for a brood of dories and fishermen to return. We Portuguese have fished here for nearly five centuries. Little has changed. My name is Antonio de Graça. I live in a little town in Portugal called Povo de Brasil. It is nearly five months since I left my home and went to Lisbon to join my ship, but I remember it well because it is the same every year. Early in April, all the ships of the fleet prepare to sail. Thousands of fishermen from all over Portugal came to the harbors of Lisbon, Porto, Aveiro, Viana do Castelo and Figueira da Foz. On the day we leave, all the harbors look the same. They are crowded with our families and friends who have come to say goodbye. Boa viagem! They will not see us again for six months, or seven, if the fishing is not good. It is hard to say goodbye when you are leaving for such a long time. Sometimes I think it would be easier if they did not come to see us off. They cry, but they know we must leave. It is our work. This is my ship, the Villa do Con. She is 11 years old. We have a good captain and a crew of 23. There are 56 fishermen, and this is our home while we are at sea. When we leave Portugal, all the ships are painted white. The people of Newfoundland call it the White Fleet, and have done so for many years. We fish when the weather is good, and sometimes when it is not so good. Getting up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning is not very nice, but after we have eaten and get out in fresh air, we are eager to go. The doors are made ready and lowered into the water. The more fish we catch, the more money we get, so we try hard. Early in the season, we go many miles away to set our trawls. Sometimes we have to row, but when there is a good breeze, we raise the sail and let the wind do the work for us. Today the weather is uncertain and the captain has told us to stay close to our ship. Usually, each of us put out five or six trolls, but today, because we are so close together, we can only use a short line.
sometimes our lens get tangled, and then we must try to separate them again. I think we are going to be fishing for a long time today before our dories are full. I don't think that we will be fishing this way for too many more years. The big crawlers catch more fish than we can, and they say the bigger ships catch it more cheaply. But this is our way, and I will do it this way for as long as I can. Our dories are good, strong boats, and we take good care of them. In a heavy sea, our lives depend on them. They are quite heavy and are about 15 feet long. When we go fishing, we take two oars and a spare in case we should lose one. We have a sail, a compass, a baler, a bait box, and a basket to hold our trawl lines. These lines are about a quarter of a mile long, and we have five or six of them. We also take a lunch because when we leave the mother ship, we do not return until our dories are full or until the captain calls us. Sometimes, when it is foggy and we cannot see our ship, each of us have a conch shell in our dory, which we blow so our captain will hear us and know where we are. When the weather is good for fishing, we must catch as much as we can. Often the sea is too rough and then we have to stay on our ship. This happens many times and then the day seems very long. We are uncomfortable because there is not much room for us to move around. But today we fish and we are such fight. Our captain has much responsibility. There are 56 of us fishermen in his care, and he does not rest until we are all back on board. While we are gone, the deck is washed down. The captain dog, Laika, doesn't like water. A few spare dories are kept on board in case of damage. When a dory begins to leak, it is repaired by the ship's carpenter and made ready for sea again. Every fisherman has his own dory and does not like to use any other, so he is anxious that his own be mended and as soon as possible. A fisherman from one of the other ships got lost in the fog last evening. In spite of the fact that he was bailing and rowing all night, he would not throw his fish overboard and his dory was full when we picked him up this morning. He is waiting now to be picked up by his own ship. We have lots of company here today. We are fishing on Virgin Rocks, a favorite place this time of year. Besides of our own vessel, the Villa de Gonde, there is the Don Denis, the Senora da Vida and Gazella. Sometimes, when the dories drift too far away from the ship, the captain lifts the anchor and steams closer to us so that we won't have to row too far when it is time to return with our fish. We are supposed to watch our ship as the day passes so that we will see the signal flag when it is raised. When I see this flag, it means we are to return with our fish. When the doors are filled with cod, the waves wash over the border and we have to keep bailing to keep them afloat. This fisherman has a good catch. Vira 
When the dories come alongside, the mate marks down how much fish each fisherman has in his boat. A full dory can hold 10 kentles of pot. We must unload these ourselves into the ship before we can go aboard and get out of our wet clothes. Today the fishing has been slow. I think it will be after dark before many of the dories will return. As it begins to get dark and more dories come back, the cooks begin to prepare our meal. We have been out since early this morning with just a lunch, so everyone is very hungry. Our cooks are very good and soon there will be lots to eat. Fresh vegetables, hot soup, meat and fish, and red wine. It takes a lot of food to feed 56 hungry fishermen. It is quite dark now, and the captain is beginning to worry because all his dories have not returned. It is 10 o'clock and there is still much to be done. When we hear the siren, we know the captain wants us to come immediately, so I think it won't be too long before everyone is back. Only three dories at a time on each side on the ship can unload their fish, so the others have to wait for their turn. As each door is emptied, it is raised on deck and piled with the others until morning. It is very late and we still have to split and clean the fish and salt it down in the hold. But uh, first we eat. This is a good time of day. Everyone has worked very hard and most of the door is well filled. We talk about the fishing and the weather and our families. And often we talk about our visits to St. John's. This year, the Newfoundland government proclaimed June 17 Portugal Day and some of our vessels had sailed to St. John's that morning. It is always a welcome sight to see the high hills at the entrance of the harbor and to sail through them to the sheltered water beyond. Passing the little fishing village at the battery, Luis Rival sails up the harbor. There are many sh ships tied up on the south side. During the hurricane season, this is an excellent shelter for us to have until the danger at sea has passed. We come here fairly often during the summer months, and it is a pleasant change to get away from the ocean, if only for a day or so. It is good to see all the vessels looking so nice and clean, we have not seen many of them since we left Portugal over five months ago. A 
a few friends, yes, and wave as we approach the wharf. Very soon we will tie up and go ashore and feel firm ground beneath our feet again. At the statue of Gaspar Cot Real, the Portuguese navigator situated in front of the Confederation building, many people gathered for the ceremony marking Portugal Day. The Premier of Newfoundland, wearing our order of Henry the Navigator, escorted Commodore Tavares Almeida to the platform. Our consul in St. John's, Sr. Jaime Ferreira, made a speech. It's for me a matter of great satisfaction to see gathered here today the representatives of the Armed Forces of Canada and Portugal to commemorate Portugal Day in Newfoundland. To the government Newfoundland, and in particular to the Premier, the Honorable Dr. Smallwood and his cabinet, I wish, in the name of my government, to express our sincere thanks for such initiative, evident proof of the warm friendship that exists between us. We must express our gratitude to the Admiral Enrique Terreiro, as well as to the former ambassador to Canada, Dr. Eduardo Brazão, in having taken the initiative in offering this statue as a present to Newfoundland, as a token of appreciation and friendship between two countries. Being St. John's gives us time to do many of the things we cannot do when we are at sea. Many fishermen raise their dory sails to let them dry in the sun. There is not much opportunity to do this when we are fishing. And there is always time to play. Football is a favorite sport with us. We used to play on the open fields in St. John's, but these are all gone now because the city is getting bigger all the time and houses are being built on all the places where we used to go. While we play, supplies are brought aboard and other fishermen attend to little jobs they have been putting off until they had time. must be made waterproof and many things have to be mended. It is a good opportunity while the ship is at rest to make some jiggers. The lead is melted over a bed of hot coal and then poured into iron molds. It does not take long to make them and we use many when we are fishing. The Gillianus is the mother ship of the fleet. She is a hostel, a supply vessel, and has all the facilities of a modern hostel. She will help fishermen of all nationalities when she is at sea. Every fisherman likes to bring something home to his family. When the stores are open, the men leave the ships and walk to Water Street where there are many stores. Some of the shops have people working for them who can speak Portuguese and they help us when we want to buy something. fishermen's center here where we can meet our friends from the other ships. Sometimes we spend a quiet afternoon or evening reading and sometimes they have movies for us. But many times we enjoy a good song together.
So much for our meal and our talk of pleasant times. Now we must get back to work. It has been a long day, but we have had many long days since we came. We are used to it. Everyone helps with splitting and cleaning the day's catch. On the open deck with the water rushing around our feet, we work until every fish is split cleaned and salted down. We sing and talk and music is played for us on loudspeakers. It all helps to make the time go faster and work easier. When the cod is split, the backbone is remote. The fish is then washed and drawn down into the hole below. In the hole, the fish is laid flat and a handful of salt is spread over it. Gradually, the hole becomes fuller and fuller, and when it is filled, we can go home. Salt water swells and stings the hands, and the troll hands go deep into the fingers. When they become too painful, our male nurse tapes the cuts after disinfecting them and gives our arms a good massage to get the circulation going. We must be ready to do it all again tomorrow. Another day begins, bait to be prepared, doors to be loaded, and then we go again. Our ship must be filled, and we have much fish to catch before we leave the fishing grounds. There is bad news this morning. One of the ships of our fleet, the Doninese, is sinking. The weight of fish in her hold has opened the seams in her hull, and the sea is running in. They can do nothing to save her. They have set the Doninese on fire. She cannot save them and must be sent to the bottom as quickly as possible. To leave her drifting would endanger the other vessels. Her crew have taken whatever personal belongings they could and are on their way to the other ships. They will be brought to St. John's and sent home from there. It seems that we are losing many of our vessels this way. 
Last year, three went to the bottom, and the Dondenese is the second sheep we have lost this season. There used to be over 50 sheep in Dwight Fleet, and now there are only 34. Each year, the number is getting smaller. We do not think too much about these things. We are fishermen. This is our work. This is why we are on grand banks of Newfoundland, so far from our home in Portugal. <laughs>